What has happened is a colossal military disaster. We shall go on to the end. We shall never surrender. Christopher Nolan uh, contacted me and, and said he would, uh, he'd like to come and talk to me about a project. And uh, so he, he flew to London and saw a production of Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale, which we were doing in the West End. And the next morning I met him and he was absolutely brilliant in his analysis of the play and the experience of the play. So it was, it was fascinating to hear that guy. I thought it, it, was, it really was, it was a great treat to have a, a kind of workshop on, on the sort of dramaturgy behind The Winter's Tale from a really passionate and, and, and intellectual outsider. Anyway, so that took up half the morning. And then the other half of the morning he said, look, I've, I've written this film called Dunkirk and uh, there's a part in it I'd like you to play. And he took me through what he intended. And, uh, but, but the truth is, uh, as it were, he got me at hello. Um, so it was the, it was the filmmaker. They need to send more ships. Every hour the enemy pushes closer. They've activated the civilian boats. Civilians? We need destroyers. Commander Bolton is a naval commander in this film in, in charge of the um, safe um, evacuation of men from the mole, the long um, breakwater that stretches into the uh, ocean at Dunkirk and we were able to film there and to try and recreate some of the challenges that were uh, mounting this operation in that particular part of it which was to get as many uh, of those 340,000 men off the beach as possible so he dealt with being um, bombed and, and with the uh, um, the difficulty of the tidal system which meant big boats couldn't get in easily for half of the time uh, and was constantly under pressure both both in, in t terms of actual enemy attack and stress and lack of sleep across the days of the operation. If you'll fight on the beaches, if you'll fight on the landing grounds, we shall never surrender. We shall never surrender. Another director I admire enormously, uh, Danny Boyle, uh, once said to me that one thing he envied about my position was that I was able to watch other directors direct, um, which he, he can't get to do. And in this case, because in that case I could see him and work with Danny a couple of times, and uh, to watch Chris Nolan in action was, was a privilege. To, but also to have met him, that initial contact, to feel the passion behind it. The, he, he's a, such an interesting figure for his parallel capacity, and I think both things are meeting in his work, there's, there's always been a sort of, at least to this outside observer, tremendous intellect, amazing sort of mathematical scientific brain, and with this project it felt as though it was coming to a sort of, to the other frontal lobe as it were, and all the sort of passion and sort of wildness and, and, and pure feeling were being expressed. Something to get back to the initial conversation when we were talking about Shakespeare, he was talking in, in his own life about, his, with his children getting older, the, the, the value of life, the fragility of life was very, the, the value of time uh, was really uh, key to him and he saw Dunkirk as a way in which that was all wrapped up. Time was, was so precious both to get them off the beaches and in those young lives to be saved.